This is Shout Podcast, the official health and well-being podcast from the Firefighters Charity. Hello again. How are you doing? Welcome back to Shout Podcast from the Firefighters Charity. Over the weeks ahead, we'll be bringing you a series of interviews and conversations with people from across the charity and from members of our fire family around the UK to give you an insight into some of the health and well-being challenges facing those we support, as well as some guidance on what we can do to help. In this episode, we sat down with Greg, Martin, Struan and Michael, a group of Scottish Fire and Rescue Service on-call firefighters at Pitlochry Station on the edge of the Cairngorms National Park to talk about the mental health highs and lows that come with balancing firefighting alongside family and professional life. Just having a newborn three weeks ago, mm. coming back and then going back to work the same day, for like two weeks later and then getting called out two hours later. And then you're kind of got leaves a wife and kids at home. She's dealing with the night feeds, and you go and get called out at three in the morning, called RTC, come back and you're expected to then pick up a newborn baby and be nice and relaxed and calm. But it, it's hard to do, but you, you kind of can't just do it really. Get a feel as well. And the longer you do it, it becomes second nature. Is it? Yeah. 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 I, I thought that, that's the way it worked. Uh, it's after so many years of doing it, it's like a mate just becomes party. And how you do it and how you deal with it is. We don't talk about it, you know what I mean? No, we it don't, is... we, 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 and, but we might be a bit, we might seem a bit cynical as how we deal and how we handle things in our own personal circumstances. Yeah, sure. um, but that's the way it has to be because, it, but we have to be technical on the job. Do you know what I mean? It's like we have to make sure that things go as. A, there is probably a, better ways dealing with it than it has been in the past, though. To be fair, there's more, there's more on offer now than ever, but it's all about being professional and you, you go into a certain mindset where you've got to deal with what's in front of you. And once you've dealt with what's in front of you, you switch off. Mm-hmm. And some people think it's a wee bit heinous that actually you, you, you'll see somebody smiling at these things, mm-hmm. but having a laugh with your colleagues and, and dealing with it is the only way you can. Can you? Um, some people don't like that, some people do. Personal preference, but I think in all the years I've been here, I've I've only ever once had a, an incident that, that affected me, and it was a young girl. And it was a girl that was maybe two years older than my daughter. And that made me think, oh, hang on a minute. Mm. But that is the only time that anything's ever affected me. And that was actually one of the incidents that we got the backup support. Oh, yeah. Um, we all came out here and we all sat in the drill yard and got the chairs round <laughs> it was a nice Saturday afternoon and we all talked about it and it's the only real time that we've ever done that um, and it did make a difference so it, it, showing these ways of dealing with things can be, can be a good way of going forward but everybody's got to do with it in their own way definitely I feel um, <clears throat> just even speaking to my wife um, about things just once it's talked about, it's done, but it's, it's finished. And then you move on. Um, but as long as I've spoken about it and got what I need to say said, and then fight. You can definitely get out. Definitely better to get out. You yeah. sit there thinking about it. It's like you go to bed, like, you come back and mush out at five o'clock and you're wired to the moon. Yeah. You're up at six to go work. You was part of it. You went out the night is a sleep deprivation. It is, yeah. And that's what you work the next day. You do. Or you, and the, the weirdest thing as well is when you go to a show. And it's all adrenaline. And then next thing you know, being a journey, you do a big bump, and the you work. You how do you? How do you? But it looks yeah, it's like it's yeah. just natural. It seems to be just this. You go into kind of. The other side of that, the hardest thing is after a long day's work. You know, and 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 a you know a hot day or whatever. You you a long day's work, and you've got to go out there and uh, cut cars open or go into houses or health vials or you know it's always pretty physical stuff. Yeah, and especially this at night. Well, you go out at night and you early morning. You, you, you go back to bed, you try to get that half hour of sleep mm-hmm. because there's half hour left here and you're not. There's no chance you're getting back to sleep. I don't give back to sleep for that half hour. There's also the catch up element that you know, if, you, if you go away for a long period of time and then you come back to work, you come back to something we're doing, you then, you know, you need to catch up on it. Yeah. And so you end up sort of burning yourself out even more potentially sometimes, but. You do it all. These things, yeah. these things are few and far between that. I think everybody remembers the first. Bad shout as well, but it's always you need to get over it. You don't get over it, but you kind of 
his last Jesus was crying out and I thought I don't remember when I first <laughs> I think it would have been now a lot a lot quieter than it was maybe once upon a time with especially the RT season that yeah I thought mm. when I joined our first year we had about 250 shouts now last year I think we had just about 100 mm. yeah and, and but they all seem to be more severe and more of their proper yeah. shouts yeah we see you see, see that the page goes now you're kind of expecting it's going to be something yeah. which you kind of know it is that Hot weather brings them. It's getting that as well. You can be asleep. And then when the space is seven minutes, you're on the road. Mm-hmm. And for us in the back, rookies especially, it's kind of just keep your head delicious. Well, but we, for we people like Greg and Martin in the front, yeah, their head must be going on yeah, an hour. On on. It's not just the people that you're going to save, it's the people in the back of the blind side. It's a lesson as well, because there's been as many times that we've been to Fisher's for an alarm. We, we called it there one night and... That was and the place was a fire. The whole hotel was up on fire. You know what I mean? That was that turned out to be the biggest, the biggest sh- shout of that year. You know what I mean for the fire service? You know what I mean? So then, just know what you've done right. When you come back, we like I said, with us being rookies, we you know we know our, what we're doing. But you got your roles. You know we got roles. Do it. It's just it's amazing how quick it goes as well. You think and you do the training, and it's you do the same thing over and over again. You go a shout, and it's an hour later, and you're you're coming back with and You're like, well, that went perfect. Most day long to put a fire out, does it? <laughs> it's a long time to clear out the mess. Yeah, that's the biggest answer. Yeah, yeah, put it out. Yeah. It's uh, it's good to know that if anything does get too much on top of you, can even in house you've got that, but no one to have that more support further on because it is hard to speak to people, especially when you're working side by side every day. You don't want to be the weaker one in the group. Maybe that's what all people might think, but knowing that you've got phone call away, whatever it is, message you could it's it's good to know it's there. There's quite an old fashioned thought that it's a bit of a macho place to work. Mm-hmm. Um but it's 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 really not no. and more so now at the moment I feel we've got a great group of people that contribute in many different ways but there's no egos. Everybody is really very comfortable with each other so they can talk. They can support each other if needs be but you can never have too much support um, we've we've encountered some of the, the support um, avenues from the fire service after a couple of difficult shouts and we can always do more there's never there's never enough because you don't know how it affects that one person who says they're okay yeah um, and even a few weeks down the line you can see that they're really they're not yeah you can tell. You need to pick up those those signals that are happening now. Yeah, yeah. So no, you need as much support as you can get at the time and and during the period afterwards, because it's very easy to think well, I've got this. Nothing's affected me so far. Nothing's going to affect me. And then all of a sudden, when that one does, you go hang on a second. It's like you say, it's too late. So you need to be made aware of these things and the potential for something to trigger later. You need to be made aware of that early. There's maybe not as enough awareness of that at the moment, so people need to be some mechanisms made aware of that to break down male pride. That's unfortunately yeah. that's the, 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 yeah. the part here is breaking down that male, male pride and then it's the looking at the person you've just been. Well, you could be a shot with six people and it's only affected one person, and you're wondering why. So that shouldn't have affected me, but then even like you said, Greg, again, highlighting that there is help there because you do know you see it, but it's still not as high as it should be. It's a funny one, because I always say to my wife that I feel like a bit of a heartless person, because I don't let anyone bother me. No. I've been so no. fortunate, apart from that one incident with my daughter, where the, the woman, the, the girl, she drowned in, in, in the waters, and they walked up her for about an hour. And we walked back to the machine, because it was, it was in Dunkel down the woods, we walked back to the machine, and it was like, wow, did that just happen? She's only two years younger than my, uh, older than my daughter. That could have been her. That's the only time that I've ever went shit. That's because she can kind of bring it into your reality. Then you can distance it. You can. It's, I could bring it. I could. And a lot of other things you could do. Yeah. Yeah. And I've always yeah. never ever done it. And yeah. since then, I've never done it. That was surely one time. The other thing I think is well, being in the job we're in, we don't really switch off. You know, mm. Colleen will say to me, you know, I will just leave it to let somebody else is dealing with it, and I'll have to go and see if I can help or. If somebody's fallen in the street, I'll pull the bar up or I'll, I'll stop. Yeah, you yeah, see, you need something. Yeah, you're right. Whereas it's, before, before I did this, I honestly believe that you would look at it and go, 
somebody's dealing with that. Well, that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. And, and a lot of people would go past and see now I can't, can't alter yeah. at all. You, you can't pass stuff. Yeah. yeah, I certainly can't anymore. No, you're clean sitting there. Oh, gee whiz, he's at it again. <laughs> it goes again. That, that's, that's just the... Uh, it's the mindset, it's the culture. The, it's the, the, the culture and the mindset, and it's definitely the common artery and the, the thought that you're doing something for the community and the help and the, the people about you. Because it's their family being protected. Oh, yeah. And their neighbour and their and both businesses down the street. That we're protecting now. It definitely takes like, having the extra. Go. I mean, having the extra help. Which we, everybody knows that male is suicide. Is what you think when you think of that. It's what it seems to be now. Is and it's not a male. It's a male. It's a lot more males who are firefighters and you're dealing with that. We're even going out to shouts where there's another male that's that's had issues or mental health issues. And that's a lot more now. Yeah. Again, and you could easily you do need someone else to go and you need someone to speak to and it proves that. I mean, we go all so far. Then someone needs to kind of back us up as well. You, but when we need that, but and I feel you do. I feel we definitely do get that. So it's good. yeah, you can never get too much help. But boots it off each other. Mm. Is, 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 is it's a way of dealing with it. It's a way of deal handling things. And when you come back, the, on the back of the machine, I was at the the, the shoot that Greg, but was that with the wee girl? But after a door, same as just the girl was drowned. So. And I could watch this at uh, real time, you know what I mean? And that was horrific, you know what I mean? The, the thought, the, just the thought that was horrific, you know what I mean? And most of the people are with it, like to John, you, Don. They all have kids that age. Don, or grandkids that age, yeah. actually. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's the other thing is when you're, when you're working in such a, such a close community, you've got family members who, just past the driving test, and you think, oh, is this car crash going to be them? That was me. Yeah, and then you've got family members who fall into rivers, and you think, oh, God, is this going to be them? That was your brother. Yeah. And so you've got all these things that you've got to deal with. Especially when you're around the area, you, the more you will be retained around this area, so it's going to be somebody you know. You're going to know the person. Unless it's an RTC on the road, you've got a lot of tourists, but most of the time it's going to be someone, someone you know, that will affect. You know, you know the house number, you know the name of the road, so you know someone lives on that road, you just wonder if it's going to be that. <laughs> That one, but mm-hmm. well, I, I turn, did turn up at the station one time, and it was my son. It was not the crash. Mm-hmm. My son, and it was the officer then phoned me from the dog till we get to the hospital. He doesn't, they don't expect them to make it. Do you know what I mean? They don't expect them to to, to make it to the hospital. And they worked on him on the side of the road, and they stopped him from the four times between here and Dundee. And you drive the HTVs now, mm-hmm. so okay, boy. You know, yeah. mate, he's, a, he's, he's lucky, you know what I mean? But the, the coming out of the whole, the whole system, the whole, everybody together, and you know what I mean? It was like, I had a stroke in November, and I couldn't wait to get back on the station. You know what I mean? I'm away from, just away from my house, you know what I mean? And amongst the guys, just to, for them to say, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, Make sure you could do that, so, yeah. you, you know what I mean? Just to have something different, something a way for you to take away from normal life, you know what I mean? That's it for this episode. Thanks to Greg, Martin, Struan and Michael for giving us such an honest insight into life as an on-call firefighter and the reality of juggling starkly different sides of life. If you're an on-call firefighter yourself, you can find advice and information to help with some of the issues discussed on the charity's website and in My Firefighters Charity, where you can also join our dedicated on-call group and chat to other on-call firefighters from across the UK. Of course, every on-call firefighter in the UK is an eligible beneficiary of the charity. So, if you need support, pick up the phone and call us today or access support directly through My Firefighters Charity. Thanks for listening. We'll have another episode of Shout Podcast for you soon. So please subscribe on whatever platform you usually get your podcasts and tell your friends about it too. Until next time, take care. Shout Podcast. Please subscribe and review us wherever you get your podcasts and check out firefightercharity.org.uk to find out how the Firefighters Charity could support you. If you liked Shout Podcast, you're going to love My Firefighters Charity, the new social media well-being and fundraising app for the fire services community. Packed with great well-being content from the expert teams at the Firefighters Charity, 
you can connect with others, join groups, collaborate and have fun with your Fire family friends across the UK. And you can get the advice and help you're after from the Firefighters Charity whenever you need it. Head to your app store, search for My Firefighters Charity and register for free today.